is Pablo Ferrer. Pablo who? Well, I found a book uh, by Preston Blair, which he uh, did the animation in Fantasia, which he had the hippopotamus dancing with the crocodile. And he did this book, which was amazing. He made little figures, little round head, and almost like the doll boy, but more in proportion. How to animate, do a skip, how to do a fast walk, how to do a slow walk, how to do a bouncing walk. They were all there. And you study the little frames, and so they said, oh, and I checked it out, I did it exactly what he shows you, and we shot it, and it worked. Uh, with this book, uh, it gave me confidence. And I shot my own little film to show how I animate. So when I went to the animation studio, they did commercial. They didn't want to see anything that I did. Uh, I show Stan Lee uh, the uh, comic book that I did. And the ending was too shocking for him. He said he couldn't print that. Uh, but would I illustrate some for him? I said, sure. Uh, but uh, my interest wasn't really in doing realistic comic, uh, it was more in motion. Stan Lee said about me, you know, people usually, when they start in comic book, they stay in comic book. Probably just keeps continuing into all kinds of different art forms. I said, yeah, because th that influenced me. I look at it and say, oh, I'd like to do something like that. You know, that's great. How could I accomplish that? But I did three stories for him, you know, and, uh, and I took that money and I bought equipment to do animation. <laughs> the latest in a series of more than a quarter million 16 millimeter magazine movie cameras by Bell and Howell. And I said, you got anything else? So I pulled out a comic book that I did with real design, real people. So they looked at that and they said, did you do the inking? I said, I did the writing, the pencil, the inking. He said, okay, you're hired. And I went into the ink and paint department. Well, that's when I then went to work for a commercial studio. And I was working for this very creative person for Electric Film, A Bliss, who told me how to be sophisticated at the same time have dry humor. So because of him, I became also animation director. The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. But then he handed it to me to animate it. The design was already done. I had to uh, crisscross the feathers, an outline that is spread open. And then as I was spreading open, colors came up where they were supposed to. Now, since there was no too many color television, I had to do is it would work for black and white because that's all they were gonna see. Only the wealthy people might have a color set. So that took a long time to do. They used to make fun of me because the whole building went up <laughs> and I was still working on that color coming out of there. It would be perfect. That's what I like to see. Uh, I like to see improvement, and I like to surprise people. I like to show them something they haven't seen, because when I create something and I'm the first one that sees it, it's an amazing feeling. It's something that I can't even describe. It's better than any other experience I ever
Being an animator, uh, that's 24 frames per, per second, and that taught me about movement. And I put that experience into still photography, which uh, I, that's the first time I used the quick cut. I made still fo photograph look like it was live in the movement and quick cutting to it. Uh, in the animation stand, then I took that a step further and I started doing it with typography. Then I started doing it with live action. And that's when it became very popular when I did with live action because all the commercial was mainly shot live. So that's when they took off. And the, the, I was able to take a middle spot and make it into 30 seconds, which I did for England. England, they had 30 seconds, they didn't have middle spots. So then America then became 30 seconds, no more minute spots. Stanley, uh, he saw my commercials uh, and he liked the style. It was completely different that he has never seen before. Uh, and then he called me up to uh, meet him because he wanted me to do the trailer for Strange Love. He wanted that style. <laughs> Of course, he being such a charming person, uh, he talked me into staying there for about seven months, working on the movie because he had other ideas for me, not just the trailer, which I didn't realize till I started working with him. Well, Stanley, uh, he was, was a wonderful person, you know, and very caring, and and he cares about you, and he likes, like me, he likes to work. So when I first met him, it was easy, you know. Uh, I know I heard people complaining about him, but I said I never saw it. You know, people probably don't like to change things because sometimes we, we work on an idea and we put it together, and a week later we look at it and say, that's not such a good idea. Let's change it. And then we go through and change it. <laughs> If it's anything to do with fabric, we do it at Burlington Industries, and we do more of it than anyone in the world. Oh! Oh! Dr. Strangelove. Or, how I learned to stop worrying and... Love the bomb! <laughs> I'm going while the sun keeps shining 